today's Namaste Yoga begins a brand new series called Focused Living. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa West, and welcome to episode number 295 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we are beginning a brand new series called Focused Living, and I think this series is going to be absolutely life-changing for you. Uh, when we asked our viewers like you, our Namaste Yogis, what the biggest challenge they face or the biggest obstacle they face in practicing yoga. So many of them give us responses that uh, speak to us about the lack of focus in their lives. So many of you have commented to me about the challenges and the obstacles and the obligations and the commitments that you have in your life that prevent you from being able to come to your yoga mat. And everything from work to children and yoga teachers that have yoga classes that make it challenging to find the time to practice yoga. And so this series, we're going to take the time to find focus. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be an excellent series. I've done the whole outline for it. We're also going to bring in the, the yams and the niyams. Uh, from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. We're going to combine that with our theme of focus. So I think it's going to be a really powerful series. We're here in Beacon Hill Park today in Victoria, BC, beautiful Victoria, BC. And everything's been earlier this year in Victoria, BC. And it's September the 2nd when we're filming. You'll receive this on the 3rd, 4th. And <laughs> fall, autumn is early as well so we it's cool here so that's why I've bundled myself up in a, a fleece this morning because it's we're in the shade it's I don't know it, it can't be 10 degrees in the shade even it's got to be less than 10 degrees here of course uh, we're used to at this time of year our, we're not, our bodies aren't used to cooler temperatures either so uh, excuse me for bundling up <laughs> it's really cool for me um, so thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes, I'm, this fleece is not from Squeezed, but she is actually working on a jacket right now that I need to photograph for her. But I am wearing my bamboo, Yoga Makes Everything Better, uh, underneath, and my long grey leggings. And thanks to Dusky Leaf for our props, today you're going to need a bolster and two blocks. And I have a testimonial to share with you. A five star review on iTunes from Miss Melissa N from the USA. And Melissa N says, Melissa has a great way of teaching beyond the poses. I'm so happy I found her and I tell everyone about her practices. You'll be glad to have tried and subscribed to her podcast. So thank you so much for leaving your five star reviews on iTunes that helps other people just like you around the world find us. And if you go to thankyoumelissa.com, there's lots of instructions on how to leave your reviews and and we really appreciate that when you do that. So let's get started. We're going to be starting in Supt Bada Konasana today, Reclined Goddess Pose. So the way that works is you're going to need your bolster and, and you're going to put it lengthwise on your mat and you're going to need your two blocks as well. And you're going to lie down on your back so that the bolster goes about at the base of your rib cage. And then the blocks are going to support your knees. And just place the blocks where you need them so that there's no strain on your joints there. And then allow your arms to open out to the side. 
and we're doing a little heart opening here in our class day we're going to focus on compassion and also courage so in this pose you're getting a really great heart opening chest opening in your heart center and you're also getting a really good opening in your hips, in your groin here. And that's going to prepare you for some poses that we're going to do for courage later on. Some standing postures that are coming. This pose is also a great counter pose to the general posture you most of us take during the day when we're sitting in chairs being rounded over computers, laptops, tablets, cell phones, where our posture is hunched and rounded over these devices. So it opens up your chest rather than being rounded forward. So as you rest back here, just focus on your breath. Allow your breath to come right into your rib cage and up into your shoulders. And let your breath be your focus here. And then from here, you're going to draw up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back to your spine, use your hands to bring your knees back to the center. Roll to your right side. And we're going to make our way up onto all fours. And we're going to do some cat pose. Actually, no, I'm gonna do it in the order I had it originally. <laughs> okay, I was re-guessing my order. I'm sure any of you that are teachers never do that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna come on to all fours and we're gonna do some lunge pose on Janayasana. Uh, so let's begin by walking your left leg through. This is a great pose for focus because you do have to focus on balance on this bond by sinking down through your front left foot. And then we're gonna come upright on this one. It's also a great one to open up the front of your hip, which gets tight from spending so much time sitting too. And then we're going to create focus here with, uh, we're going to create focus a lot in this class by bringing our hands, creating compassion by connecting to the, our heart, uh, which is also a space for courage as well. Uh, so just place your hands one over the other on your heart center here. and then lean back and switch legs. And this time you can walk your right leg forward. So step your right leg through 
and sink down and find your the bottom of your right foot so that you can balance in this pose and then <laughs> I've got that extra challenge of balancing because I'm wearing socks today <laughs> and sink down to your right foot come upright and then we're going to create more focus here by centering on our heart for courage and compassion And then lean back and we're going to come on to all fours for the cat pose. Okay, from all fours, take your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. You can come on to fists if your wrists bother you or even down onto your forearms. And let's just warm up your spine a little bit here to begin with. So breathe out and round up through your back. Drop your head and your tailbone. Bring them closer to each other. And then breathe in and arch your back. Lift your head and your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Breathe out. Round up through your back. Draw your head and tailbone closer together. And then breathe in and arch through your back. So this pose is great for a million reasons and we just released seven classes on this pose in our membership community. And so one of the reasons that I'll tell you right now is that gravity acts on your spine all day long when you're upright. So when you're sitting or when you're standing and so it creates compression in your spine. And when you're doing a pose like this, you're opening up the vertebra of your spine in both directions. And that draws uh, fresh blood flow into the intervertebral discs and fluid into the intervertebral discs. And so it plumps up those intervertebral discs and creates more space in them. So a great pose if you have any back issues. And then we're going to expand on this pose for focus by um, creating a balancing pose out of it. So you're going to take your right arm forward, your left leg back, and then you're going to lift your arm and leg. And this is also going to prepare us for some balancing poses that we're going to do standing. And from here, you're going to breathe in, breathe out, draw your elbow and your knee together. So this is great for focus. It's also great for your brain because you're creating a crossover pattern in your body. Inhale, reach. Breathe out. Reach your elbow and knee together. And we'll do two more like this. Great for toning your abdominals too. And then bring your hand and knee down to the ground. And we're going to switch sides. So this time you'll take your right leg to the back of your mat, your left arm forward, and then lift them up off the ground so that both of them are parallel to the ground. And then breathe in here. And for focus, you're going to bring your elbow and your knee together and breathe and reach them long again. Breathe out, bring them together. Breathe and reach.
and then bring your arms and legs down and sit back onto your heels just stretch out if this doesn't work in your body you can always lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest instead Okay, and then you're going to slowly roll up to your spine to a seated position. And from here, we're going to sit kneeling. So a couple of options for that, if that doesn't work in your body, you can actually come up to standing and do these standing. Can I show it standing first? Okay. So if kneeling's not gonna work for you, uh, for this first bit, you can do we're going to stretch out the fronts of your ankles so you could do this instead from standing, okay? So there's the option for you. And then you can control how much pressure you put on the front of your foot so you don't have to take it back as far, for example. You could even take it in front of you. So that's, that's what we're doing from kneeling, if kneeling doesn't work for you. Okay, so to begin with, you're just going to lift the front of one knee and stretch at the front of your ankle. So we're doing this just to, this is a counterpose to life <laughs> stretch. So because we walk around all day long with your feet flex, so it'd be a good idea to stretch out the fronts of your ankles, I thought. <laughs> this is just a little bonus. An example of lack of focus in a class, actually. <laughs> And then we'll do the other one. I thought while we were here, we might as well get it in. Yeah, Tim's doing it behind the video camera. Because see, he's standing right now. So whether you stand or sit, your foot is pretty much always in a flex position. Maybe when you're sleeping at night, your foot's not in a flex position, but probably even when you're sleeping, your foot's probably flexed, kind of in that active position. So it's a good idea to stretch the fronts of your ankles. Okay, and then actually for our seated meditation today, I, w I would like you, if it's possible in your body, to sit in hero's pose to connect with that sense of courage, uh, to connect with our hearts. We're going to do hand over hand. If this, let me give you an option. You can sit kneeling on a block. That's quite nice, and I'm going to do that because this ground is very wet, so I'd rather not have a wet bottom when I stand up <laughs> for photos later. <laughs> Uh, if that doesn't work for you, then sit in a way that's comfortable for you. It's not absolutely ne necessary. Uh, you can sit in a chair, you can sit cross-legged, however you normally sit for this portion that works for you. And you're going to place one hand over the other to connect with the compassion and courage of your heart. That's our mood drawer for today. It's going to focus us, focus us on our heart center. And close your eyes to prepare yourself for the teachings for the first class in the Focus Living series on focus and non-violence or ahimsa. Over the next eight weeks, we are going to explore some tools of focused living through the yams and niyams of yoga. Today, we will begin our travel into focused living through yoga by bringing awareness to the violence that exists in our life from lack of focus. And violence shows up from lack of focus, through being stretched too thin. And I really want you to take this in because I think it's such, we're like fish in water with this. And it's such commonplace that we don't even see it as violence. But take it in and bring awareness to it. So violence shows up from lack of focus through being stretched too thin, by saying yes without thinking, rushing from one thing to another, trying to please everyone, trying to get it all done, majoring on the minor, resenting your commitments, saying yes to please, saying yes to avoid trouble, feeling overworked and underutilized, feeling productive, sorry, feeling busy but not productive, feeling unfulfilled by being pulled in a million directions, feeling exhausted and overwhelmed by the pressures around you, feeling like you have to do it all, feeling like it's all important, trying to fit it all in, reacting to what's most pressing, 
suffering from taking on too much and feeling out of control. So I'm sure we can all relate to some or many or all or a few of those. Without focus, we experience a constant low-level self-harming sense of violence as the quality of our lives go down and our stress levels go up. And our culture actually celebrates being busy as a measure of importance. Let me say that again. Our culture actually celebrates being busy as a measure of importance. <laughs> what was that book, Tim, that Tim Ferriss reviewed on his podcast about, and it was about not being busy. And it, we'll have to look it up and put it in the show notes. It was so neat. We were both going to read it and then I forgot about it. <laughs> Tim Ferriss is a, he wrote the four hour work week. Yeah. So it's about like not <laughs> doing more. It's about doing less. Yeah. So living in a first world country with privilege comes with first world problems. We actually, in our first world country with first world problems, have too many choices. Psychologists call this the excess of decision making or decision fatigue. The more choices we are forced to make, the more the quality of our decisions deteriorate. So I found this really interesting when I was doing the research for this. And, and most of my research for this came from uh, Greg McCowan's book, Essentialism. And then I really, um, I made it my own and shifted and molded it a lot to, to uh, sink into the yums and the knee yums to make it quite yogic. But the book is very yogic if you read it. It's actually a business book, but it's, it's when I first read it, I was like, oh my God, this book is so yogic. Um, so this really, uh, uh, hit me when I read it um, that not only are we experiencing information overload these days but an incredible sense of increased social pressure uh, so I could really relate to this and I'm sure many of you can as well Techno technology has lowered the barrier for others to share their opinion about what we should be focusing on The strength and number of outside influences on our decision has also increased. So we're not only experiencing information overload, but also opinion overload. And I know I experience that low level violence every time I turn on any platform of social media. So I experience that kind of opinion overload any time I go onto any kind of social media. I don't know about you. So the idea that you can have it all and do it all is also sold to us and is part of our cultural mythology. Um, it's part of every career, job description, and university application. And the myth is more damaging than ever today as choices and expectations have really increased exponentially. This week we will bring awareness to the violence that the lack of focus is causing in our lives. As Greg McCowan says, almost everything is noise and there actually are very few things that are adding value to your life. And it is worth the time to figure out what is adding value to your life. When you take the time to figure out what is important to you, the effort you put forth in finding that value is a way to express reverence and love to your highest self. It connects you to the wisdom of your heart. So saying no to people and things in your life that aren't adding value means pushing against social expectations. This takes courage and compassion. This is a process of emotional discipline to say no to social pressure. But we become free when we choose to live a life that is focused on our own values. In yoga, the first yam, ahinsa, asks us to live a life where we practice non-harming and non-violence. 
So I think it is useful to bring awareness to the ways in which our lack of focus in our world is a source of violence that causes us harm. When we're living from the Yama Vahinsa, we have reverence and compassion and come to be present with kindness for ourselves. We can learn to respect and treat ourselves with reverence and love by bringing our lives back into focus. Treating our bodies, emotions and mind with reverence and love takes time and focus. It goes against the grain of our fast-paced culture. In order to be present with compassion for others, we first need to focus on our own needs. It may feel self-indulgent to focus on your needs in such a direct way, but as you will see in the next eight weeks, it will bring you incredible freedom. So reflect on these teachings and ask yourself how they relate to you and your life. And then begin to form an intention of what you want to receive first over the next eight weeks. And then not only over the next eight weeks, but the next baby step. What do you want to receive from the rest of this class? What's the next little step? So what is it you want to receive from the rest of this yoga class? What is it that you want to create, sustain, release, a rebirth in your life? And how can your yoga practice help you to do that? And then when you're ready, you can, we can go ahead and make our way up to standing. We're going to do more postures con to connect us with our own sense of courage and compassion. So I'll get you to stand up at the top end of your mat. I am going to take off these socks so I don't slip. So we'll start with warrior one to connect us with our sense of courage because it does take courage to go against these social pressures, these social norms, these social opinions and to connect with the, you know, your own true values, what you, what you really want to say no so that you can say yes to yourself. So let's take a step back with your left foot first and then sink down through the Front, your front right sit bone. Turn your hips so they face the front short edge of your mat. And then we'll continue connecting with our heart with that focus mudra here. And reflect on your intention, the intention that you just set. This pose is very strengthening for your legs. Opens up your front hip. And it will really help you connect with your sense of courage and your heart with your hands on your heart. Then find a way to let this posture out of your body on, on this side and step up to the front of your mat again. And this time we'll take a step back with your right foot. Let's take a long step back about the length of one of your legs. Sink down through your front left sit bone. Turn your front right hip to the front of the mat. Feel that opening in the front of your right hip again. Very strengthening for your legs. Open your right knee left knee out to the side so you can see your big toe so that you're not damaging the inside edge of your left knee and connect with your heart again for courage and compassion and to create that sense of focus here.
And then find a way to let this pose out of your body. From here, we're going to create focus through a balancing posture that is about uh, taking action, which is warrior three, Virabhadrasana three. And this one, balancing poses are great for focus. And um, you're going to start with your hands by the side of your body. I'm going to give you lots of options in this pose. You could use your hands on a chair or on a wall in front of you. You're going to stand on your right leg and roll your pelvis over your leg bones until your body comes parallel to the ground. So balancing poses are great for focus. You can also take your arms out to the side or classically the full expression of this pose is with your arms overhead. Really nice version of this pose that I like is qu that is quite grounding is to use the blocks with your hands on the ground here as well. This is very strengthening for your core and your back. It's great for body alignment, opens up the backs of your legs as well. And then find a way out of this posture and we're going to do it on the other side. So this time you'll stand on your left leg, take a deep breath in. You're going to focus on the strength in your left leg, roll your pelvis over your leg bones, find something that's not moving. And again, either your arms could be down by the side of your body, focus on something on the ground that's not moving. So balancing postures are great for focus. Your arms can be by the side of your body, out to the side, overhead, holding onto a chair, a wall, or the blocks. And then slowly make your way back up to standing. And from here, going to turn sideways on your mat. And we're going to do goddess victory squat for, again, connecting to that sense of compassion and courage. And as I said, I think, you know, when you connect to a life like this where you do create focus and focus on your values and what's important to you instead of saying yes to everybody else there is a real sense of victory that comes from that for you so you take your legs wide and turn your toes out to about 10 and 2 o'clock and then you're going to sink down pull your knees back and we'll do this with your hands at your heart center again And then slowly make your way up to standing. And for our inversion today, we're going to do dolphin pose, which is incredibly strengthening for your upper body. So it creates that sense of courage. 
So you're going to come onto all fours to start this and you'll place your forearms parallel to each other on the ground so your wrists and your elbows are equal distance apart and tuck your toes under, breathe in and breathe out and lift your hips up towards the ceiling. And this builds strength in your upper body. And then slowly lower down and just take a little break after that because <laughs> that's a little tough for the upper body. <laughs> that pose used to be easy for me. <laughs> My upper body is not what it used to be. A sense of shoulder injury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll come back <laughs> once the shoulder starts moving again. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be competing with my daughter again yeah who does chin-ups and <laughs> yeah pull-ups that's gonna be me too <laughs> don't you worry about that be back to doing handstands too <laughs> oh, I miss that stuff <laughs> okay next we're going to do upward facing dog I like this one a lot as well because it's it's got that heart opening of the cobra, but then it adds, because you're lifting your pelvis up off the ground, it adds the uh, strength, the strength of your upper body as well. So um, it's nice to come into this from a downward facing dog where you pull your tailbone through and then lift your heart up. I'm gonna try that. Um, I'm not so sure how well that will work in my body, but I can talk you through it and I might have to come in a little bit different way. So you're gonna tuck your toes under, inhale, reach your tailbone up, and it's nice to take a nice long down dog. So there's lots of, like your feet are all the way to the back, and your hands are all the way in front of your mat. Good, and then tuck your tailbone under, reach your tailbone through, and open your heart forward. Okay, so, an option for this instead would be to lie on your belly and come onto your forearms and do sphinx instead if this isn't working well for you. Good. And then you can sit with your legs straight in front of you. And we're going to do an open twist today. So you may want to sit on a folded blanket just to elevate your hips a little bit. You're going to bend your right leg in. And then today I wanted you to feel the spaciousness of focus. <laughs> so you're going to take inhale, take your right arm up and then take it to the inside of your right leg. So you're doing an open twist here. And recall your intention. So focus in on your intention again. This pose is great to, all twists are great for letting go. So that's great because as we said in this, in the teachings today, 
it's gonna take a lot of courage and compassion to say no to the to the a lot of the noise in your life and to the demands that are being placed on you externally okay so release your right leg bend your left leg and come out of that twist on that side then we'll do the other side so you're going to inhale take your left arm straight up place it to the inside of your left leg turn towards your left leg use your right hand to support you behind you Focus on your breathing here, particularly your breath out. The more you focus on your breath out, the more you'll be able to deepen your twist here. And then come back to the center. And for our forward fold today, we're going to do Baddha Konasana. So for this one, you're going to bring the soles of your feet together. And in this one, you bring the soles of your feet towards your groin. And for your SI joints, you need to make sure that your knees are not hanging out midair. So put blocks underneath your knees to support your joints there. And if you want to know more about that, I have a whole class on that in my membership community because if you have any SI joint problems, that's kind of like the dirty little secret in our uh, in the yoga world. And in that class, I teach you about what the problem is and how to solve that problem. Okay, so you're going to inhale here and then you're going to exhale, fold forward. And this really targets your inner thighs and your groin. And then slowly come up to seated. And from here, you're going to make your way down onto your back for Shavasana. And because you have your bolster with you, I would encourage you to use it underneath your knees to encourage a nice flow of energy through your body. So you can lie down on your back with your palms turned up beside you. You may even want to take your hands and place them on your heart, just like we have been throughout the class to create that focus on compassion and courage. And you're going to stay lying down here and I will sit up and read you a poem to close out the class. Okay, so this week's poem is by Hafiz, and last week's poem was by Hafiz, so we're on a little bit of a Hafiz kick here. <laughs> it's called Awake a While, and if it resonates with you, great, then you can let it sink in and really focus on it, and if not, then you can let it go, you can say no to it, let it be noise that you push out of your life, you can take to heart the teachings of today's class you get to choose you don't have to be you know you don't have to let me choose for you as I always say you are your own best teacher 
So you get to be selective about these teachings too. Awake a while. It does not have to be forever, right now. One step upon the sky's soft skirt would be enough. Awake a while. Just one true moment of love will last for days. Rest all your elaborate plans and tactics for knowing him, for they are all just frozen spring buds, far, so far from summer's divine gold. Awake, my dear, be kind to your sleeping heart. Take it out into the vast fields of light and let it breathe. Say, love, give me back my wings. Lift me, lift me nearer. Say to the sun and the moon, say to our dear friend, I will take you up now, beloved, on that wonderful dance you promised. So breathe into your heart center. Feel your own sense of compassion and courage. And then wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees. And roll to your right side. Slowly make your way up to seated. And we will finish with our Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Mantra. And I really appreciate somebody in the comments reminding me about finishing this way. I think I've forgotten because um, when I do beginner's classes, I choose not to finish with mantra because if you're new, mantras kind of, it's maybe a little spiritual and I try not to bring too much spiritual into beginner's classes. <laughs> try to keep it kind of even and level and not too woo-woo at the beginning <laughs> to keep people comfortable. So, I, so when I went from doing all those beginner's classes, I think I forgot to bring it back in. So I really appreciate somebody reminding me about it. Um, thank you. So I, let's get back to doing this because it's a beautiful way to end our classes. Um, it, what it does is it gathers the fruits of our practice first within and then it offers it out to the world. So we start with our left hand up and our right hand down. And if you don't know how to do this, it's a series of hand gestures and um, you'll learn it over time. It's not that hard. So left hand up, right hand down. Let's make space with breath and a sigh. <sighs> Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So thank you so much for joining us for the first class of the Focus Living series on focus and nonviolence. If you like today's show, then please press the like button. And if you're new to our channel, then subscribe to the ch channel so that you can get this showing up in your feed. We put out a new class every Friday. If you know somebody who would benefit from this class, then be sure to share it with them. If you received value from this class, then you can offer a donation. This class is freely given, but it is not free to produce this class. It costs us, all, it costs us money to produce the class. 
So if you received value from this class and you would like more, then we have a beautiful class in our membership site called the Warrior's Heart class based on the teachings of Jack Cornfield and his, uh, his concept of the Warrior's Heart. It's a beautiful class in our membership site. We'd love to have you as a member of our community where we have that class, over 200 other more classes. There's a link here below. Uh, we also have weekly challenges where we have short classes for every day of the week and longer classes for the weekend and lots of support for your practice. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May you experience the strength of our mountains. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forests and may your joy be as deep as our ocean. Om Shanti. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.